Hello and welcome to Hey, we like your pod. And we're going to tell you why. Hi, it's Dawn here, and I'm joined, as always, by my trusted partner, Matt Pickett. Hi, Matt, and our very, very special guest tonight from the Paul Farrington Show are Paul and Jack. Hi, guys. How are oh, you? Good. How was your week? We're doing great. Doing great. Um, big Viking win, big Steeler win, so we're doing great in the uh, NFL <laughs> world. Happy to be on. Thank you. It's good, it's good that half of us are doing great as far as NFL fan <laughs> It could, could have been a better outcome for the Packers, that's for sure. Oh, well, do you want to tell me, do you want me to tell you guys about my experience? Please. Yes. Okay, because I'm dying, because that's all I got. Like, it's all I got. I'm still stuck there. <laughs> all we my have mental, is our memories. It's all, I'm stuck there. I'm still kind of stuck there. So on Friday, I went to a wonderful place called the Roxy. It's a local Packers bar, but it's not your typical bar or a Packers place, but it's right here in Encinitas on the coast highway. It was like a gorgeous, breezy night, a beautiful sunset. Um, they have screens throughout the whole place. I was outside. I was literally parked right in front of the screen, even though we didn't have a reservation and I couldn't have been happier. The first game of the season, <laughs> just like walking mm -hmm. on air and glued and you know i i kept saying i'm just as long as nobody gets hurt i'm really happy and I, it did really look good um it didn't look it didn't look good in a lot of ways for the packers there was a lot of weird stuff yeah. a lot of opportunities lost but you know i was i was okay you know i was okay mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. enjoyed my company i mean it was just the food i was drinking these gin fizzes these are uh, hibiscus gin fizzes with this egg white frothy thing on top that was lemony like a good night there you go. oh my god Seriously. i know like, it was all lining up. the food everything and that last what was it five seconds or 15 seconds i don't know but all i did was like double over I mean, I just couldn't mm -hmm. even stand mm -hmm. up. I was just like, boom. I thought it was the end of the world. I thought it was the end of the season. <laughs> and I just took my Uber home and whatnot. But I'm still kind of emotionally stuck in there because it was such a perfect night in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And then that happened. And I was just devastated. Um, it just killed me. But Okay, but here's what made it worse. Because... I don't get this a lot. I've never experienced this in my life. So ran into the, the restroom um, just to like wash my hands and get on sticky or what. Yeah. No, I wasn't crying. I was like, oh, I wonder how all these fans are doing. And I, it just so happened that this little short dude with this smirk on his face wearing an Eagles t-shirt walked by me with a smirk. No. And you guys, I was like so emotional. <clears throat> I almost grabbed him and I am not a violent person. I was like, what oh. is he doing in here? So here's how it goes. So my friend was behind me and I get in the bathroom, washing my hands or whatever. And she was in the stall and these two girls come out and, and I was just like, I can't believe somebody who's an Eagles fan would show up like that. Like in a Packers mm -hmm. bar, what was he thinking? And this chick goes, well, I'm a Bears fan <laughs> or something oh, like no. that. <laughs> and then she's the only thing that could be worse. Giving right. me this crap. And I was like, I'm not going to hit anyone. I'm not going to kill her. I'm not going to. I've never experienced anything like that. And I got him both at once right after he got hurt. Now, I would have probably not cared if we would have lost or won or whatever. But he was hurt and I was hurt and I just couldn't take it. So that's my story. It was just bad. It was like uh -huh. a gut punch. Hey, we so weren't now, happy either. We, no. we weren't happy about it either. Yeah, I was at no. a, a local bar and grill as well. I was I was having some Stella's uh, mozzarella sticks, having a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I see 
I see love on the ground. <laughs> yeah. In the last five seconds of the game, Just I'm like, got a bunch of texts from Jack no. and Ziggy. No, 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 no. I, I'm like, no, no, no. You have to remember, like, even though we're Vikings fans, we understand who who butters our bread. Like, we we know that the fans <laughs> are the ones who help us out here. So we might not be rooting for them all the time, but we need we need them to be okay. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's your material. Oh my god. No, I never experienced anything like that, but I will tell you something now when it comes to, you know, and I never like on Twitter when people are going after the Bears fans and going back and forth, I'm always like, oh, that's so silly. Ah, I'm on it. I, I am going to be so heckling the, gear, the Bears fans for the rest of my life because no, of that. No, no. You know, I, I will say that, you know, you guys being like, you didn't like to see that either. Like, I appreciate that. And I feel like that was the overwhelming sentiment from almost everybody on Twitter who I saw like any interactions with regarding Jordan Love going down. So I feel like, you know, on the whole, the NFL fan base, you know, broadly was, uh, you know, really had the right mindset because in the end you got to understand like if your own quarterback goes down, you're not going to be really happy about that. So let's, no. let's, let's just be people. And so right. there was a couple of notable exceptions, uh, a particular Bears fan I can think of who was really yes. a douche about it. But like for the most part, I was pretty impressed by the, uh, the outpouring <laughs> of like sympathy and support. Um, it's, it's one of those moments where like, you know, we, we all just like football and y- you know, it's like no one wants to see this kind of thing happen. And, and that's, that's kind of, a, it's unified, it's a sad thing, but like the, the beautiful thing that comes from it is, is that moment of like, yeah, we all just, we all just want to see a good game. And that's kind of cool. Totally agree. Yeah. yeah the, the, sure. biggest, the biggest shame too is, is, you know, Packers fans aside, just football fans is the way that Jordan Love finished last year, probably is the best quarterback in the league, you know, top two or three, mm-hmm. I'd say for sure. And now he comes into this season with top five MVP odds <laughs> and, and we're, we're waiting for to see where he's going to leave off, uh, if he can continue what he did to end last year, uh, mm-hmm. bring he's in potential, and just to go down week one is just humiliating for a football fan in general. So I, I, I get what you're saying there, uh, Matt, for sure. Yeah, I was really – yeah, I, I kind of stayed off Twitter and stuck to myself, but I did see that one post you were talking about, Matt, and I was just like, yep. are you kidding? This is – I don't know. Is it the world just coming after me today or something? Because I never <laughs> experienced that kind of thing. I'm in La La Land over here in California, and it's like, who? I mean, who would show up? Okay, I might go to a, a – a, like a Viking I might, – I might go to a Vikings bar if I were – and I had to, I guess, if they were playing the Packers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mean any, I mean, I'm just far. using that as an example. Or bears or bears. Okay. But I have choices. But anyway, if they were, and there was no place else to go or whatever, but I wouldn't wear a Green Bay Packers t shirt to a Vikings bar or to a Bears bar. I just think that's. I'm, asking I'm overly trouble. sensitive. Yeah, asking for trouble. It is asking for trouble. It's, it's. I mean, I feel like there is sort of an image of the Eagles fan base as being kind of rowdy and kind of looking for trouble in general. Um, mm-hmm. So maybe that's just kind of like just playing to the stereotype, which I, I want to point out. I mean, this it is a stereotype for sure. I'm not trying to say, you know, all Eagles fans are like that. Right. But it, yeah, can we just kind of in line with that sort of mindset, you know? <laughs> that's your experience also, too. A, a very common, uh, I guess, misconception you know, with the Paul Farrington show is that we're all Minnesota Vikings fans. I know Paul and our other co-host Ziggy are. I'm actually a Steelers fan. Oh, so okay. I, I dislike Philly as well. They're on the wrong side of the state. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've always had a, a, a negative uh, feelings about them. Right. Okay. So, okay. So let's talk about you. It's not about me. <laughs> I'm over it. It's like, I just had to share because normally we start the show with how was your week and i'm like i'm still i'm still in friday of last week so you're processing i'm still there (laughs) um okay so paul you're in new jersey and Mm -hmm. jack you're in new jersey but paul you're a minnesota vikings fan and content creator and jack you're a co-host um and you're a steelers fan so help us understand maybe paul you could go (laughs) first and then jack help us understand this yeah so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. And most people, most people think I'm from Minnesota. So you see the Notre Dame helmet. Like I went to school at ND. Talk about a rough weekend, by the way. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Um, but most people will assume you're just from Minnesota when you say you're a Vikings fan. Sure. Uh, but my dad, when he was a kid, you know, growing up, didn't want to root for the Giants or the Jets like all his friends. Yeah. He, uh, he liked the purple people eaters. The Vikings were good. <laughs> Hopped on that bandwagon. And 
You know, they just they could never win the big one. And every time they'd lose, his friends would kind of pick on him a little bit more, a little bit more. And it just strengthened that uh, that fandom until it became ultimately the curse that it is. And unfortunately, that was passed on to me (laughs) as a young child. (laughs) Such a curse. And we, we talk about that all the time them. about how sports fandom, sorry, um, is is passed on generationally, and yeah, for better or for worse, I think sometimes definitely it's so hard <laughs> to just become a fan of a team. Like, like if you yeah. ch- try to change teams, or you know, when the Nets move from New Jersey, I'm finally on board with the Knicks, but it, you're kind of just born into it most of the time. That's mm-hmm. true. That especially I was I was raised in Wisconsin, born and raised in Wisconsin. So even though I live out here now, it's I wasn't a even a one. football one fan, believe it or not. Ones. Yeah, it, but then when I decided to be a football fan, it really wasn't a choice for me. Like with my family, you know, it's like I would be disowned. What about you, Jack? What's your story? So it's a funny story. Uh, my my grandparents or my my grandmother is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Initially, she was born there, raised there, mm-hmm. and when I was a young kid, I was about six years old. We were going out to Pittsburgh, our whole family, my mom, my dad, my siblings, my uncles, my aunts, my grandparents. And I couldn't tell you why. I forget the reason why. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. And my dad, who had never been there before, was like, Pittsburgh, what on earth are we doing there for a weekend? Like, what's (laughs) going to do in Pittsburgh? (laughs) And he's like, "Uh, I mean, there's a Steelers preseason game against Dallas. Should should we go? And um, me as a seven year old kid is like, yeah, like sure. So we go out there. Uh, we go to a uh, to Heinz Field and go to the Steelers Cowboys preseason game, my first football game ever. Mm-hmm. And it's super nice. You got the football stadium. You got the rivers. You got the bridges. It's a beautiful, beautiful city. Mm-hmm. And we're on the way home, and my dad's like that city is like kind of amazing. Like I, I'm shocked that Pittsburgh is that nice. <laughs> I'm not going to go back. And from that moment on, we, we got Steelers season tickets. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> so since I've been like all in, since I've been like eight or nine years old, we've had season tickets. Uh, I haven't missed the Steelers home playoff game since I was a young child. Wow. Uh, we're out there like three or four times a year going to Steelers games Pirates games. Uh, my dad does some real estate out in Pittsburgh. Uh, so we've just we've become Pittsburgh people you know, in the last, <laughs> last 20 or so years. And it's, it's a funny amazing. story. I, I just kind of come, you know, age five, six, seven. Here I am as a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Yeah, like you never hear about like spontaneous generation of, of fandom like that. That's that's right. amazing. But yeah, I just want to like confirm that Pittsburgh is a beautiful city. Like you wouldn't mm-hmm. expect because it's like, you know, Steel Town. You think of like this, this dirty old like, you know, industrial kind of place. But it's like it's really lovely. And like like you said, the bridges, the river, the, the hills, you know. Yeah. Beautiful no, it is. It is, uh, it is quite awesome. I try to tell all my friends too. you know, let's go for a weekend. It's nice. And they're, they don't believe me. They're always like, oh, <laughs> they're like, what? like what is there to do? I'm like, I'm like, no guys, like, trust me. I've gotten a couple of out there and, and you know, they see they that I'm like right. It. We all like, we still it. got, I still got to get Paul out there for a weekend. He hasn't been out there, but since I haven't been there for well, 10 years, yes, yeah, 10 years, he still has lost the playoff game. But, uh, no, I, I, that's my story. Mm-hmm. That's my story. I and my dad worked for the giants for, for years when he was in college, he was a giants fan as a college kid. Then he transformed wow. as well. Wow! And you're but and so but you so you're from New Jersey then? Yeah, so. I'm, I'm born in New York. So mm-hmm. okay, remind us again how that works because there's isn't there like three New York teams and it depends on where you're, what part of New hmm. York you're from. Are it's sort of divided up? Like if you're from the city, it's the Jets, right? You, I thought Manhattan was a lot of Giants people. So, oh, okay. How it mainly works. I always forget. I know exactly where you're going with this. <laughs> yeah. Is if you're a Giants fan, you're also a Yankees fan. Oh, that's okay. right. All right. It's kind right. of just, I know the Giants have been pretty bad lately, but you know, mm-hmm. overall, the histories <laughs> are both very good. Giants, a winning franchise. Yankees, a winning franchise. And then, <laughs> then there's the Mets and the Jets. Okay. So if you're a Jets fan, you tend to also be a Mets fan. Which is okay. just a tough draw. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think a, lot, but a lot of Giants fans are here in North Jersey, right? I'd say more. Yeah, a lot of Giants fans. It, it, you get that Jets-Mets combination, and those are just 
some miserable sports fans. <laughs> right. Miserable people. That's a rough life. <laughs> so, oh, okay, how can, you, how can you historically suss out who might go to what group? Is there any like sort of connections or threads, or is it just like it's just random? It's not even by neighborhood. It's just super. Like, how how does that work out? Does I, I would it? say I would say that it's more, at least from my experience, and and I'm since I'm not a Giants or Jets fan, I guess I really don't have a, too good of a beat on it. But mm-hmm. most of the people, I think it stems from the baseball teams, kind okay. of like if you're okay. Bronx area, you're Yankees, you kind of just go to the Giants. It's it's a little weird like that, but uh, here in Northeast Jersey, it really is just kind of random. It's like you just happen mm-hmm. to be. Most of us that are Giants sense. fans um, mm-hmm. around this area, and I think mm-hmm. a lot of that has to do with the Giants. I've just been way more successful. Um, mm-hmm. But every now and then mm-hmm. you get a Jets fan and you're just like, I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry. You got that, that side of the coin. Yeah. I'd say in our neck of the woods is definitely, I'd say 65, 35 Giants in North Jersey. Like I come across more Giants fans than Jets fans. Uh, okay. I, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cause I always, I mean, what do I know? But I know nothing, but I kind of associated the Jets more with the city. I think Manhattan, that, but it's maybe I don't think, I don't think that's crazy um, because a lot mm-hmm. of times when the Jets get going, I think the city is a little bit more alive when the Jets uh, are good because yeah. it's, it's so ra- it's so random for them to just pop up out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, I do feel sorry. Sudden, for them. All of a sudden, you start having the newspaper headlines. Uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers. They have mm-hmm. a little bit more when the Jets are having a good year. They have some a little bit more oomph behind them, and people mm-hmm. get excited probably because mm-hmm. it doesn't happen very often. True, true. Makes sense. Um, And then are there more, is baseball bigger deal in New York than football? Mm, or is it football, just, I'd say. Really? People, okay. people yeah, love their baseball. People, here, people yeah. do like their baseball. Uh, like I go to a fair share of Mets games. Mm-hmm. Most nights there's a good crowd. Yankees mm-hmm. games are a good crowd every night. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd say football is probably still king. But mm-hmm. when playoff mm-hmm. baseball rolls around and the Yankees are playing, I think mm-hmm. if the Giants and Jets are struggling, baseball down. baseball takes a front seat in October. Sure. Oh, it was amazing mm-hmm. too this year That's with the Knicks. Like when when it gets going, when the Knicks are good, when when one of the teams, yeah. the Rangers, as well have had a few runs, it's a, yeah. a really fun sports town to be a part of. Unfortunately, uh-huh. you know, <laughs> half our fandom <laughs> are not those teams. But mm-hmm. the right. Knicks was pretty cool this year. Yeah, that was neat. Yeah, that was neat. Yeah, I was even rooting for the Knicks, but I forgot who were they up. Against. Oh, I didn't want the who beat the Bucks. The I can't Pacers. Remember. Pacers beat us. Yes, I was that so was- mad. I was like, "That's <laughs> not right." I really wanted the Knickerbockers to beat the Pacers, since we didn't, and we should have. But whatever. Okay, that was another injury. Gian- Giannis was injured. Yeah, that was rough. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, back to whatever. We're not we're talking about football. So did y'all watch the um <laughs> we're very on track here, very focused. Trust us, we, we oh, yeah, are we, not we're, yeah, we're, we are prone to tangents as well. Yeah, we do the same we do the same thing. Good. Um did you all watch what was your impressions of Monday night football game, San Francisco 49ers and the Jets? Since we were talking about the Jets. You wanna take this first? Uh, I, yeah, I uh to be honest, this might sound kind of surprising to most. It's kind of what I expected. I oh, okay. I like San Francisco a lot in this game mm-hmm. at home. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Rogers is a 40-year-old man, his first game in, in a while on yeah. the road against probably the best defense in football off a Super mm-hmm. Bowl loss. Yep. Uh, I am kind of surprised how the Jets' defense seemed to have gotten torched the way they did. Especially yeah. by a backup running back. Yes. Uh, I can't say I, I I like the Niners though minus the three. I thought that spread was too low. Uh, mm-hmm. I would have been shocked if the Jets had won the game outright. I think the right. Jets would be fine, but it, or Aaron Rodgers is forty years old. First game coming off an injury. Mm-hmm. It, it was a bad spot. It was a bad spot for the Jets. So I, I'm not shocked at all from from what I saw. I was expecting mm-hmm. a Niners dominating win. I think the Jets are fine. Though. I didn't. I didn't think it would be a dominant win. I was expecting more from the Jets. You said the defense. There are so many stars, and they didn't. You know, like Sauce Gardner didn't play that. The secondary was okay <laughs> um, statistically when you look at it, but it just felt like San Francisco could do whatever they wanted, and they yeah. have games like that. I, I didn't expect it to happen, but 
Remember yeah. when they played Philly last year? Uh, remember when they played Dallas? Like they just have these games where all of a sudden you can't stop them. And they yeah. flip that switch maybe in the second quarter there. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the Jets offense kind of just fell apart. Uh, I'd like to see mm -hmm. Mike Williams get healthy. He's, I think he's a lot better than people remember. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not too worried about the Jets. I think they'll get uh, they'll play a lot better. It's, it's a really tough draw at San Francisco. Oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For any team, I mean, ultimately. I well, think, I mean, you know, you guys see this weekend when uh, San Francisco travels to Minnesota, you know, you'll see. Oh, what, yeah, that's that's 49. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, Packers fans, of course, have sort of a complicated relationship with the Jets because of a complicated relationship with our former quarterback. Because so, he's a complicated um, guy. He's complicated. He's a complicated fella, you know. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it was <laughs> – I, I was really looking forward to just seeing him throw the ball and be like, you know, let's just see what he can do. And there's a little bit – you can feel like a little bit of that sort of Rodgers, you know, magic. But it also – yeah, it looked like he's a 40-year-old dude out there coming off a year. Exactly. And it was – it's like he might get some of that back, but I'm – after that first one, we're not really encouraged. I mean, I think the team will be fine, like you're saying, and their defense is usually amazing, and they have all the, the, the parts there, but I don't know. I, I never would have even guessed that the Jets would win it, though. So I was always like, yeah, I right. they're too good. They're, just, they're too good. They're too good. They must be stopped. So you guys <laughs> got to stop them. That's what it is. And there were, there were some throws Rodgers made, too, mm -hmm. like a touchdown pass to Lazard, where you, you, you can tell it's like, oh, like he's, he's still got something there. Yeah, like, exactly. Like little bit I love when he does that. Drag Someone jumps off side and he just, he just, it's yeah. Right. So obvious right. when you're watching. I, maybe it's different. I, I've never played in the NFL, but it, it seems so obvious that when someone jumps, you're just like, I right, go, everyone go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So good at what he has like six or eight. He had, he had a crazy yeah. number of touchdowns. Uh, yeah. They said it on the broadcast. Time. I was surprised it was that many. Yeah. No, he's lot. so good at that. I've always, yeah, yeah that's his specialty. That. So what did you say the spread? What was the, what were the odds on that game? They were only favored by three yeah, points. The, the, the Niners were a three and a half point favorite. That's crazy. Oh, I'm Which surprised. I, I'm surprised. I thought it was well, yeah. Yeah, I just couldn't believe Mason. Like well, that. Jordan Mason, that man. Yes, I picked him up on uh, on my what fantasy team when I found out that McCaffrey was like questionable. I was like, oh, they, get this guy on the waiver right now, you know. Yeah, he, uh, he showed up. I was impressed. Rewarded. But you know, that's the thing, right? I was like, I better pick him up because even if Christian McCaffrey's not here, it's still friggin' Shanahan, and the guy's gonna produce. Jack says running backs don't matter much, so he was he felt pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So my my take has been that a running back is the least important position in terms of wanting to be successful and in, in terms of winning a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Like I think if you have a good offensive line and a half decent running back, he'd be fine. Like, I don't think you need a superstar running back to be a Super Bowl contender. Mm -hmm. No, I'd agree. Well, that, that makes I, sense as a Steelers I, fan. Yeah. To... yeah. And I'm uh, a Viking fan. So, you know, Adrian Peterson, we, growing mm -hmm. up, my entire offense was just a running back. So I have a little bit more uh, <laughs> right. bias in that way. Right, right. You know, speaking okay. of, uh, of amazing running backs, you guys... So, so uh, sad to see Aaron Jones <laughs> do so well. Oh, at the Vikings. Happy for him, I guess, in my heart. But. Oh, oh sure man he went off it's really funny you say that matt because i didn't i mean i've always thought aaron jones was was amazing um, yes I, one of my clear memories of him was jack and i were actually playing each other in fantasy football and it was when you guys went into dallas i believe you beat the cowboys pretty good and he had four touchdowns and i so jack had aaron jones i was playing against jack had this huge lead and all of a sudden you know aaron jones is chipping away chipping away chipping mm -hmm. away and finally, I'm on the phone with my dad. I'm like, Jack is just, this is unbelievable. And as I'm saying that, Jones run, runs in for his fourth touchdown. And he's just, I, I really think he was taunting me. He was holding on the floor, screaming, yep. four, yep. four. Into the I was like, this mother, like this guy is actually, he has to be targeted. I think you still beat me though. I, I, I think I still barely, won. I barely won, but I was furious. And uh, I did not know that the Packers fans and Aaron Jones had such a close connection. I knew oh. that they loved him and how, how good he was. Yeah. But until he signed with the Vikings, and I, trust me, I've loved every part of that. Mm -hmm. I, I bet. <laughs> I did not realize how heartbreaking it was for Packers fans to yeah. see him go. And he just seems like such a good guy. He, he is. is so He's like the best. He's mm -hmm. the best guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. But we still love him. I mean, that's how great <laughs> he is. I mean, that's the relationship. You know, he's not. it's not like some people. It's like, oh, I, sorry. Uh, he's I won't still mention good. names. He's still really good. <laughs> Yeah. 
yeah, he's wonderful. He's wonderful. And how old is, um, by the way, hi to the chat. Sorry, I, I don't oh, want to distract you. We're kind of like, you, chat tonight, yeah. <laughs> hi, Iowa Joe and Mercury Road. Mercury Road says Paul has a Minnesota accent. <laughs> Mercury Road, one oh, of our guys. He's he, one of our. He's one of he's our fans. All, he's, yeah, he's always. Uh, <laughs> he's always commenting. He's. He's a fun dude. We like Mercury Road. His, his uh, profile picture is wonderful. Yeah. He's a little scary and wonderful. And <laughs> Iowa Joe, ten k wave game. What does that mean? 10, that was yeah. that was that Aaron Jones, right? That was the game where he like uh, waved oh. at the guy on the way in. Was that was that that game? That was that last was year, right? The playoff, right? Against the Cowboys when we went what? into Dallas and <laughs> no 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 it was or are you talking about another time because he did really well last year against Dallas as well we always do well against the Cowboys well, he, he particularly too. does I or did at least with the Packers so yeah we love he was him. great at the end of the season when he came back I think he ran okay. for over 100 yards in like five straight games as much as people talk about Jordan Love exploding at the end of last season Aaron Jones was just yes. dominant they both yeah. yeah. Yeah, they even worked out off season together last. Not not obviously this most recent, I don't think. But um, yeah, there was they had a nice relationship too. Yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> I'm just no, <laughs> well, no. I mean, <laughs> I understand why the Packers did it too. It was just kind of. I don't think most people yeah. thought, you know, that he would go. But it is, you know. <laughs> Anyway, okay. All right, let's get back to my script. Where is my script? Okay, so that's the that's the explanation. Okay, this one is specifically for Paul. Paul, could you explain your profile picture on Twitter? Oh, my my Twitter profile. Hold on, let me let me make sure it's still. Oh, this this is sad clown. The sad clown. Yeah, this was a picture of me. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, it looks see, like a little girl. girl. Yeah, yeah. Little girl. It... <laughs> yeah this is me on halloween i i guess my mom did me pretty oh. dirty and put me in a clown outfit oh okay, it was um, you okay. that's me at like one or two years old and uh my cousin sent that over in the picture the full picture i'm uh next to my cousin brenna who's dressed up as i believe jane from tarzan and uh she sent over the picture of the two of us and just wrote sad clown <laughs> And I think it's kind of on, you know, as far as my football fandom goes, I think it's a pretty good representation of it. Yeah, they're, they're so right there. And um, yeah, my Instagram as well. For some reason, I, I have biopics of me as a little kid. Uh, yeah, I, I love that picture. It's uh, the sad clown. I love it. I, I love that. I think I need to do that. Now that I'm getting older, it's like maybe my baby picture would be nicer. I'm <laughs> getting up there in nah, years. Nah. Okay. Okay. So let's see. And now we understand. Oh, my question was, what were you wearing? So it was a clown outfit. But yep, you know Halloween. What? Speaking of, yeah. So like Mercury Road, his clown picture doesn't bother me and yours doesn't, but generally clowns really freak me out. Yeah, so, I, I'm okay with clowns, but uh, there are there are times you know, if I'm walking home at night and I just see a clown standing under a, like, a lamp, <laughs> right? <laughs> then, then I don't want to yep. see a clown. Well, Different I, route. I think that would be so clown. bad. Oh my god! Don't even say that. Okay, so <laughs> your birthday party. Yeah, then, then like, I'm okay. a lot of your birthday parties are right, but <laughs> situational <laughs> fear. I think. Yes. Yeah. Context. Clown context matters. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. So, okay. So now we know how you became a Vikings fan and a Steelers fan um, for, for uh, Jack. I don't know why I want to call you Nick for some reason. You look like a Nick. Okay. So okay, how, how did you become a Vikings YouTuber or a football YouTuber? Would you call oh. yourself a Vikings or would you just football? I think I just, I usually just say, it's kind of weird calling yourself a YouTuber. Like, uh, you know, when our sense of YouTuber is still accounts like Smosh and the people from the early 2000s. I don't know if you mm -hmm. guys have heard of them. Some people who listen, I'm sure have. Uh, mm -hmm. But we, so the show, the Paul Farrington show actually started when I was a freshman at, at college. It, uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to do like a radio show. I always found it interesting. Mm -hmm. And Jack and I's friend Will was going to be my co-host. So it was going to be, we were trying to think of a name. And at the time, the placeholder for our name was just Paul Farrington show. And Will was like, Hey, why don't I just keep it as that? Like we, we were struggling to think of something. So right. we kept it as the Paul Farrington show. Personally, I've never, I never really liked the name. Um, it always felt a little awkward and odd to me, but at some <laughs> point it was just, okay, I guess, I guess just accept it. And we rolled with that. 
but we did that for four years, um, graduated and wanted to keep it going. So we turned it into a podcast. And I mean, mm-hmm. people could see, like, if you go back on our Spotify, you have to go way back uh, to 2021. But the original plan was just do a couple quick hitters, like one minute, two minute segments. Like that was the whole podcast, a horrible mm-hmm. idea. But that was the idea. That I had. <laughs> That's true. So I did like two minutes on Tim Tebow. I don't know what he was doing at the time. And Jake Paul. <laughs> and then uh, brought in, brought Jack back and Ziggy back. And um, next thing you know, we're on YouTube. And I think those videos are still up on YouTube. Maybe I unlisted them where it's just Jack in an unfinished basement and me in my like apartment in South Bend, Indiana. I love it. Horrible mics, horrible cameras. <laughs> and eventually, you know, for any, uh, so many people want to try and get into this industry. And it's a hard one to get into, but if you just keep kind of chipping away, make progress one or two months at a time, then you finally have nicer mics and like a nicer camera. Mm-hmm. That's, that's how we we just, you know, chipped away slowly over the course of four years, three years. We were going over Zoom. We were going over it was Zoom. It, it, I mean, it, was... it was some of the worst <laughs> videos you'll ever find on YouTube. Like, <laughs> you, can't, you can't even watch it now. It's so bad. <laughs> That's great. And so why were you in South Bend, Indiana? Was that so where you I went to school? Gone, so yeah, so Notre, so that's where Notre Dame is out there. Oh, right. Okay. Um, but then upon graduating, so for my job, I was actually producing a show for um Kyle Hamilton, who's you know now a superstar. But uh, it was his it was his junior year. Him and a couple of his friends on the team did a podcast, and I was the producer of that show. Oh, so they okay. my company needed a man on the ground. Um so I was here in Jersey and said, Hey, you know what? Like I could go back for my quote unquote fifth year and uh, and have some fun at school. And I was producing Kyle's show. Oh, nice. Super fun. And Jack. And so Jack is just your sidekick. Did you so you you live in the same town now? Did you all did you grow up together? You two or. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. And went to school together at college. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, not college, but we grew up. We've been in school together since or we've known each other since like second grade. I, oh, I remember Mrs. Claus. our second grade teacher was Mrs. Claus, and <laughs> I walked in to school. I had a little Steelers like winter hat beanie mm-hmm. type of thing, and Paul had the same exact thing, but just a Vikings one. Mm-hmm. But it had the yellow bottom, except mine was black on top. His was purple. Yeah. And he's like, oh, are you a Steeler fan? I'm like, Yeah. I am. I'm like, I'm guessing you're a Viking fan. <laughs> He's like, yes. Great intuition. So, so, we, 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 were very, we were very we, smart. You know, we were super with it back in back in, <laughs> back in second grade. But, yeah, that was the first ever encounter with I Paul in that. second grade. Mrs. That's Claus. a great meeting story. Mrs. Claus. <laughs> I know, Mrs. Claus. That just made me think of something funny, another funny, uh, a funnier. See, I forgot all the good things about Friday. Um, my friend who I went with, she's a, she's from Wisconsin. She's a Packers fan, which I didn't know. I mean, she's like 30 something and like half my age, probably less. And she's like, oh, I'm going to have a friend join us. And I was like, cool, cool. And so the friend who joined us was from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Oh, wow. So I got all the like culture stuff going on. It was just like such a perfect evening, but um, and she had just gotten home back here from there. So, but she was a native. She grew up there. So that's kind of cool too. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's super neat. Yeah. I like I we're seeing from, a, I was yeah. Gonna say, I like we're seeing in real time here, Don, that you're like, you're processing through the grief and focusing I, again like, on the yeah, positives yeah, here. You know, it's, it's going to keep emerging. I think you'd be like, oh, and also there's this food that they brought out. It was incredible. I think it's just going <laughs> to keep happening here. So I don't know if I'll ever, I mean, I, I'm kind, I'm really glad I wasn't alone when that happened. I was really oh, glad. So you, know I'm sorry. you guys are overreacting a little bit. Like at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what I love is like, it's, it's just, if that's a Viking quarterback, oh my God. If Jordan Love were a Viking quarterback in that situation, he'd probably mm-hmm. have his leg amputated. Like, I think it's great that uh, it's, they, you guys should be so happy. It's just, um, it, it didn't it look horrible in the moment. Yeah. It looked, well, it looked so bad. Could yeah. not have been it anything looked terrible. I think for me, it was just because I was having such a perfect evening, right? <laughs> it was just so fun. I was just having a really great time. Mm-hmm. And it was the first game of the season. And it was just like all that. And it was 
it was still perfect up until that moment, even though I didn't think we were necessarily going to win. He had that look in his eye, though, like he did for the 49ers game. Like, yeah. kind of desperate. So, I mean, I don't know. I could be. I could be. Kind of desperate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we couldn't get their defense. I mean, we couldn't. Our defense didn't show up for us. I mean, he needed a little bit more time. I don't think he would have been so panicky. And maybe, maybe just maybe he wouldn't have. Like he was throwing the ball and stuff. It's like, just go down. Just put yourself in the fetal position yeah. and go down at that point. Don't get your <laughs> knee broken. So I think he has to mature a little that way. Don't you think? I mean, he's really a competitor. Like, big yeah. Time. So yeah, Paul, I, Paul, I think you make a good point. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so say, I think you make a good point that like, given everything, given how bad it looked, the fact that it's just an MCL and he's probably going to heal pretty fast. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be fine. I mean, even yes. kind of ridiculously, you know, the coach is like, you know, maybe he's on the field this week, which is like, okay, Matt. Okay. Yeah. Like, calm down. Calm down. Sure, sure. Sure. <laughs> it's, I mean, I get it though. Like it's, it is kind of a, a fluky type of thing, but mm -hmm. like with five seconds left, he's rolling out. Like there's, you know, still in their minds, there's a, there's a small Hail Mary chance we could win this mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of fans saying, Oh, uh, you know, why is love? Why is he even playing this series or just go down? But it's easy to say in hindsight, right? But right. I think it's, it, yeah. I mean, it's, who's the guy who came before him, right? Think, exactly. think about all the Hail Mary mm -hmm. attempts that right. Aaron Rodgers had, yeah. So yes. it's it's a uh, it's tough and it's terrible. It was tough to see, um, yeah. and it stinks as a fan, but it's easier to say in you know, after the fact that he shouldn't have been out there, but I can't blame mm -hmm. him, yeah. No, I was thinking it at the time. I didn't think he was going to get hurt, but I was just like, calm. I just felt like the intensity from his eyes, like he was like, I'm going to do something out here. And I was just like, ah. I was more thinking interception, though, you know, something like that. And as opposed to debilitating knee injury. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, at least, at least it was a Friday. So you got to enjoy your weekend. Like if it was Monday night football oh, or Sunday night, or Sunday night football, <laughs> that would have been terrible. That's true. We just have to process to, like, and kind of recover, you know, watch some college football, yeah. more NFL football. If it was like a Monday night, I, I would have been off. Yeah, the recovery. Yeah, was true, true. Illinois upsetting Notre Dame. <laughs> well, Wisconsin football is doing up. <laughs> yeah, go back. <laughs> yeah, I was busy with my true crime stuff on Saturday, so I really didn't get to sulk and lick my wounds until Sunday, and then I just kind of laid there and watched all the games. And there you go. We can put a little, it, little if, badger. Like, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't mind me asking. What oh boy, what true uh -oh. crime? I, I've watched so much true crime in the last week on Netflix, like so oh, wow. much. Oh wow. It, it, I've become like addicted to it. Uh, it is. It's good. Well, I've uh what's my favorite one was it was American I think American Nightmare it was good. The blonde haired girl who who was kidnapped. Oh, um you know? Elizabeth Smart. That might have been it. Yeah, I forgot that might have been it. I forget the name, but I don't know. I've watched a lot. I watched a lot of true crime. I watch a lot of trials, like actual trials on YouTube. I have so if I'm interested in a trial, I will watch the pre-trial hearings, the opening statements, all the testimony. I mean, I'll just have it going for a week. You know, some of these trials last yeah. for a while, but I don't sit and watch them. I listen and I'm doing other things. Yeah, um, but I have another uh live that I do usually on the weekends. I'm not as consistent as we are here on our podcast here, but um, it's basically about trials. And so any trial that might be going on or coming up. And so um, right now, the next trial that's coming up and that I'm, and I have been obsessed with for years and they did, they were, I think on Netflix, 2020, all kinds of, it was the shooting, the, the conspiracy to murder a law professor in Florida, Dan Markell. And I remember hearing about it. It happened in 2014. They didn't really figure out and get the picture together until a couple years later. And it ended up being, and so there's been, this will be the fourth trial and there's probably going to be more <laughs> because it's a conspiracy. So a lot of people were involved, but it was basically um, his ex-wife and her family who, who <laughs> what a hired. Great comment here. Iowa Joe, the blonde girl that got kidnapped, that just describes 75% of the documentary. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. 
It's, it's just been a long day. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's so not funny. I was, so when I said that, I was, I was thinking that, like, wait a minute, that's like a horrible description. I, like, it, it, I just gave you like ninety yeah. percent. Yeah, that pretty blonde girl. <laughs> it's that blonde girl who was kidnapped. True. It's a blonde girl that got kidnapped, or an ex-wife or ex-husband that got murdered. You know, it's that's very common. I didn't not realize that until I started watching trials, but. Um, like family court is more dangerous than any other, like lawyers talk about this too. It's just really because people are so emotional and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Dan Mar the murder of the Dan, Dan Markell. Um, let's see. I, wa I really, it, it has to kind of grab me. Like if something grabs me like on the news and then a trial happens, um, I watched you can see these. how we get easily distracted on our show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's on this channel. So if you ever want to like watch what I do, it's kind of fun. I do fun shorts and fun in the sense that, yes, it's a tragedy. But if you're watching the trial, you're like getting to know all these personalities and crazy people and that come up and tell you stories about like witnesses and in some of it it's just very colorful and interesting and you learn a lot i learn a lot from it but um laurie daybell did you remember that well, that was really big in the news did you watch anything on netflix about the kids in like, idaho jack's like i watched a bunch I, oh the I idaho one. Like, well, I, mm. i'm more of like a uh i watched a lot of like murder mystery stuff yeah like not really a lot of uh Real. like stuff yeah. like that but just like murder like there's a murder somewhere we don't know who did it and mm -hmm. everyone's trying to find out like a lot of mm -hmm. stuff like that mm -hmm. which is which is interesting to me but i don't remember anything i don't remember really <laughs> no i can relate yeah. that's okay I'll, I'll just watch it be like oh that was really really good yeah and not remember what it was called sure <laughs> no i i can relate right matt i'm just like that <laughs> that that is can confirm yes <laughs> okay. yeah, that, that's me too okay. Um, okay, so um, so that's your story about becoming a YouTuber or a podcaster, <laughs> I guess, podcaster. Yeah. Okay, so for those who aren't, you know, familiar with Paul Farrington, so your description for your YouTube channel is YouTube, I'm sorry, is an NFL and betting talk show Monday and Friday on all platforms. So it's not just YouTube. Yeah, that's that's pretty inaccurate at this point. Oh. <laughs> I, need, I need to go back and fix that. That, uh, that should be, yeah, that should probably be fixed. Um mm -hmm. We are actually not even Monday or Friday. <laughs> We're Sunday, Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday <laughs> right now. <laughs> and we have content coming out basically during um, during all of the week. But our full yeah. episode is coming out Sunday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm going to need to. That's a good point. Thank you. I'll, I'll go and fix that. <laughs> yeah. I think our last guest had no YouTube description, and so we made one for him on the show. It <laughs> It was a Twitter, his Twitter bio, yeah. I mean, Twitter. I'm sorry. Twitter I'm sorry. Twitter bio. <laughs> You're not really active on Twitter, are you? Um, see, are Twitter. You? So again, part my job is like a, is a producer. Like I'm, my professional job is a producer. This is the fun, you know, side hobby, which we're mm -hmm. trying to make a job kind of thing. Um, so I understand like the importance of Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. Uh, we are just don't have enough. <laughs> we don't have enough bodies to get all the right. content that we want out at the moment. Understandable. Um, Twitter, Twitter is a tricky one for me. Yeah, I, I'm fairly active, but my Twitter game is pretty horrendous. I have no idea <laughs> what voice to find on Twitter. Um, mm. But mm. I, I like going on. I mean, I use it a lot more than I used to. So, yeah. and as you can see, I have a profile picture that should you do traction. <laughs> it's it's awesome. I love that profile. <laughs> That's gonna bring people in definitely. Well, usually our last two questions are kind of Twitter related. What is your favorite thing about Twitter? And what is one thing you would change about like NFL Twitter or Vikings Twitter? We often say Packers Twitter if it's a Packers fan that's a guest uh, or content creator. But um, what, what do you love about Twitter? And you could say YouTube as well. And what would you change if you had the power to change it? Change for, for like Vikings uh, YouTube or Twitter or just in general? either hmm. like and generally because twitter is basically people talking right so i guess it, what i meant on youtube is like your comment section or oh. the comment section of things that you watch <laughs> like if i if i watch a trial there's like a whole chat section which i've learned to tune out 
<laughs> I love we uh, we go live every once in a while, and I love the the live chat. We've we've you know, strategically <laughs> placed it around uh, usually big Packer games, so that's a large chunk of our audience. And I mean mm-hmm. Mercury Road, you know, we got a few people in here who uh, who join us once in a while, and those are fun. Those get out of hand, and as you can tell, <laughs> we we tend to get off topic pretty easily. So mm-hmm. that's one thing I love about you know, whether it's Twitter or YouTube. It just having engagement and you have so many different opinions coming in. I, I, a lot of people would probably say that's a negative too. Um, but for our point of view, one thing we try and do on our show and we realized help this be a little more successful. So most sports media shows are super negative. It's just why Dak Prescott sucks. Why Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers is a mm-hmm. lunatic, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> yes. And we were kind of like that at one point. Um, and we were just sitting back going like, all right, that's not really how we, yeah. Right. Like we don't like mm-hmm. that. You kind of could pigeonhole yourself there. So we just started mm-hmm. titling everything positive. It's like, okay, you know, why, uh, why the Vikings could have a good season, blah, blah, blah. Um, right. And that made it a lot more fun where all of a sudden your comments go from you moron. Why you think the Ravens <laughs> are going to go four and 12 to, Oh, like, that was awesome. We love watching you guys. See you next mm-hmm. time. So that's, that's what I like when, Cool. Positivity comes one after another. It, it kind of it's a trickle down effect. I still tend to get a lot of the negative comments. <laughs> yeah, Jack. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I guess I'm the. Uh, I provide the comedic relief at times, but it can go a little too far. And then I, <laughs> Ziggy, I'll hear really, it. So from Ziggy's su- super smart. Um, I mean, oh, Ziggy's he's so smart. The, uh, yes. Yeah, like, I knew, and believe it or not, when I met Ziggy at school, he had never watched a football game really. He oh, wow. never, didn't, didn't know anything about football, but he just consumes mm-hmm. information at a rate that I've never seen before and can remember it um, arguing. So he came on the show, like the second or third show we ever did, and he was awesome. Just amazing. Barely yeah. watched football. I was, wow. I was like, how, how the hell did you do that? Um, he's like, Paul, <laughs> you know, I'm a philosopher. Like my whole life, I've just learned how to argue different points. And, <laughs> um, and we had one comment that was great. Where the, and Jack's a, such a good sport because Jack's a smart guy. He just like he plays the character really well, um, even though he does believe most of the things he says. Uh, but one comment, remember, it said like it was it was advocating for the show, and it said, "Yeah, the uh, one guy's an idiot, one's a genius, and then the host is somewhere in between." <laughs> <laughs> and I put in a group chat. I'm like, I wonder who he's talking about as the idiot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be Ziggy. Is there a chance it's not me? <laughs> <laughs> you do. You have a great chemistry all between mm-hmm. you, you together for mm-hmm. sure. For sure. And, and, Zach, and we have producer yeah, we have Zach. Producer Zach as well. He, he gives us anytime touchdown bets sometimes. Okay. Yeah. So so for those listening, I just realized we really maybe you haven't heard of the Paul Farrington show, but obviously <laughs> he's a Vikings fan, but he has a big Packers fan following. Mm-hmm. Now, when did that start happening? Like when did the Packers <laughs> fan start? coming because uh, I, I just started seeing you in my feet i love youtube's algorithms and what they show me by the way i just I, I i'm really pleased with them compared to other platforms they seem to know what i like yeah no they're they're good at that <laughs> they're very good it's like instagram you know you talk about a water fountain or something then you have a water fountain ad <laughs> on, on your feet. that legitimately happened to me by the way yeah um oh sure i would say like so we the first time we ever had a really big video <laughs> was after um i think it was like jordan love uh his preseason debut against the Bengals. Mm-hmm. he like you know like last year um or yeah i think it was last season and he just played awesome and i saw him have one or two big throws and just kind of like looked at the tv and went oh that's not good and we, uh, <laughs> so we put out a video that was like jordan, like like oh my god this can't happen <laughs> and it had ten thousand views or something okay. had a little success early in the season and then as the Packers, you know, they were two and five, I believe. Um, at that point, it got we had our negative videos again and just weren't getting anything. And I'd say it turned what? It was like the maybe the Chiefs game. On, yeah. uh, it was right around the Chiefs game, late November-ish or so. Yeah. And they had a couple started stringing together a few wins. And all of a sudden, out, out of nowhere, really, we had like 18,000 people on a video. 25,000. Wow. Oh, 35,000. Wow. And... Mm-hmm. You know, the final three weeks of the season, it was just ridiculous. We pumped out yeah, 65,000 on one. Mm-hmm. Our Bears reaction week 18 got to 80,000. We, and we're just like sitting back going, oh, my, like, what is happening here? <laughs> you know, like I, you find yourself, you're, you're con- contemplate because you're we're Vikings fans, or at least Ziggy and I are. Mm-hmm. We can't have them win the suit. Like, they can't win the Super Bowl. 
but we kind of need him to win a few more games here and ride the tide. So, like, and Packers fans, they could see that. And I think that's what they enjoyed so much about it was that there's this internal struggle, and you kind of enjoy it yourself. Oh, I, I love it. I mean, it, it really, though, it kind of has a surreal feeling. Like, I feel like the entire state of Wisconsin now knows who Jack and Paul are. <laughs> Like I mean, we just what we do. Fun. It was really fun. It's really fun. We, we do this show from 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 Paul's basement, right at the road from my house, small town in New Jersey. And mm-hmm. whenever we talk about the Green Bay Packers, I look forward to the reactions and comments we get because I know it's going to be a whole lot of people from mm-hmm. thousands of miles away who know who I am, which is pretty, <laughs> it's pretty neat. Yeah, it was really cool. The playoff run was. Uh... Like right now, we're hoping to have a big season this year. We're putting out a lot of content, but that playoff run will probably always be one of my favorite moments of the show for however long we do it. Mm-hmm. It's funny how you describe the Packers fans coming in because I was definitely one of those people. I was actually at that that preseason game because I'm in Cincinnati, and definitely walking away from the game, I'm like, okay, I think we actually have something here. And then yep. a few days later, I saw the video that you guys did, and I was like. Oh, yep. See, if, if the Vikings fans are, are, are afraid, then this is, a, this is a good sign for the Packers. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh, no. Jordan Love looked really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Not again. I like that. Like your thumbnail. <laughs> it's like, oh, they did it again. There's something about the miserable Viking fan that Packers <laughs> fans are just drawn to. <laughs> I honestly never – I mean, I know a couple of Vikings fans, but I never got really that – they just hated Jer- uh, Aaron Rodgers. They're like, oh, or, yeah, I know or, that or they're, they're afraid of them, or they're afraid that of them. You guys are the Viking Packer relationship is is not a very good one from what everything I've heard. Where like you, it is pretty intense. Um, mm-hmm. so that has also been kind of funny. You know, we're in, I'm in New Jersey, that no one, right? No, mm-hmm. right. no one cares about the Vikings or Packers, more people care about the Packers, but um, it's been fun seeing comments where it's like, hey, like you guys, you guys are mending the relationship of Vikings yes. and Packers fans, and we're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Like, I, I'd rather have a, a healthy relationship. Right, a fun one. A fun rivalry. Matt talks yeah. about that a lot. The fun rivalry between, like, Packers fans and Bears fans, where it's not like, I kind of had a nasty experience the other night. It was kind of like, what? Like, you didn't have to tell me you were a Bears. And she was, like, gloating. And I was like, oh, man, you just don't know how I'm holding myself back right now. <laughs> it's just... Again, it wasn't that I was devastated about the game. or I actually re-watched the game that night. I was up until like four in the morning because I couldn't. But it was more just, I was, it was just like the highs and lows of my personal emotions. It really didn't have everything to do with the game. Oh, but I mean, um, Don, yeah. like that game is one where you, when you have an injury like that, that you, everyone thought your season was over. And mm-hmm. and we, like, we thought in some ways, we thought our channel season was also kind of over. <laughs> so like. I was on the, yeah. again, we're not, we don't root for the Packers. And that's, I think that's something that's really important to the success mm-hmm. of our show is, oh, Jack mm-hmm. knows. I, I, Jack root, I root for the Jack, Packers. Jack's like almost a Packers. I, I, I root for the Packers. But me mm-hmm. and Ziggy, you know, it's important to the show that we, we don't root for them. Right. Mm-hmm. But again, as I said off the top, we know who butters our bread <laughs> with Jordan Love. <laughs> so I was on the plane. I was on a plane. I actually touched down in Milwaukee and I bought the plane Wi Fi. I was watching the game and, when I saw him get hurt on the ground and he was you know, screaming. Yeah. He was crying in pain. Um, you know, classic Packer, just a little MCL sprain <laughs> makes, makes it look like the end of the world. But um, I just audibly went, we just landed. It was like re- pretty quiet. And I went, Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. And I was up for like an hour and a half, two hours, just like scrolling, listening to all the medical doctors. Mm-hmm. And it's it, wow. What, what a, what a bailout for a green Bay. Cause that, that looked so bad. No, but you have to deal with a bears fan too. Like that's, Especially when you're feeling like that in that situation, like that's the last. I thing. thought that was rude. Yeah, like, yeah. Like putting putting myself in your shoes, if like a young, healthy, prime Ben Roethlisberger went down, we just lost the game, and here's some Ravens fan coming up to me. I, I I'd punch him in the face. I know. I was <laughs> I was not happy. I was just the motions were just like, Rrr. um, you know, Aaron Jones had a what he thought was the end of the career injury similar. I think he thought it was, you know, everyone thought it was his ACL and he was really in pain and got carted off and he was crying and it ended up being, he was like back in a week or two on the field. So maybe just the, that's the Packers. I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> maybe, 
<laughs> no, I mean, her, it, spraining your knees. I've done that. It's probably one of the more more painful. Anyway, thank you for the humor. Also, True North, it's good to see you. Um, okay, well, I think um, you have a, an appointment to go to, right? Yeah, we have some. Th- we we have a, a little more time. We could do. You okay. Everything. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, Matt has mentioned kind of a fun Bears rivalry with fans, but with Viking, it can be a little yeah. more itchy. I was going to say, um, so I lived in Chicago for six years, you guys, and um, I would wear, and I love Chicago, and I would wear Packers stuff all over town, you know, and it was never like people Mm -hmm. were like dicks to me ever, you know, it's just like kind of fun, bust your chops, like kind of a thing, and and at the time, of course, like they couldn't say anything about the Packers because the Bears were terrible at that point, but regardless, it it has never felt like a really like nasty rivalry versus, you know, some Vikings fans posting like the clip of anthony Barr like destroying oh, the models, yeah. you know uh, yeah. that one game uh you know and like taking pride in that like this is one of our best moments it's like that's disgusting <laughs> but yeah, um i've that's... met enough really like really awesome people who are vikings fans especially in the last year oddly enough to kind of make me like reconsider it's like this isn't this isn't the whole fan base it's just a couple of right. people who are you just know just not not good people and uh i don't have to like characterize the entire fan base as that yeah it's that's also like i i feel where you're coming from actually i'm sorry my experience is almost the exact opposite where unfortunately <laughs> slash fortunately packers fans you know like half of my best friends it feels like are big packers fans even mm-hmm. though i'm from we're from new jersey and mm-hmm. we have friends um the frankowskis who live in wisconsin now move they were our neighbor my neighbors when i was like seven huge packer fans some mm-hmm. of my best friends a bunch of people from notre dame big packers fans some of my best friends and uh I think that one of the best stories I have about that is I went to the Viking giant game a few years ago and we brought one of the Frankowski's we brought Joe and he wore a Packer Jersey. It was, he was, we were like, all right, you know what you want to do this? Go ahead. So he wore the Packer Jersey. And of course, a few Vikings fans are starting to heckle him a bit. Like, Hey, Hey, he's with us. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. And the guy just turns around. He's like, yeah, that's the problem. It's like, all of them are nice guys. And I think that's kind of it. Like most of the Packers fans are just really nice people. Um, <laughs> which makes it that much more infuriating when you're doing <laughs> like and Aaron Rodgers and Jordy Nelson are like jumping into each other's arms and McCarthy's bear hugging all three of us. <laughs> John Coon's going to the end zone up, Coon, by, up John, by 30 points. John like, Coon's running Coon in the end chance. zone, Coon. doing Lambo leap. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. I, yeah. still, I still have some aggression from that Super Bowl. The last Super Bowl we were in, we lost to you guys. Right. I was actually mm-hmm. watched it with a uh, – some friends who were Steeler fans and some friends who didn't care. And like they were Chargers fans because out here. And I was just, I mean, I was a little bit new to football then. It was what, 2010? So it was yeah, newer. Yeah. And um, I was so like jumping for joy inside, but he was a Steelers, the, the husband, uh, the wife didn't care. But I was there like, Don, why aren't you cheering? And I was like, I just thought it would be rude. You know, <laughs> I didn't want to be <laughs> in their face. I, but... was like, I was like 12, I was... maybe 13. Oh, mm. gosh. Oof. I host a Super Bowl party. One of my friends shows mm-hmm. up with his face painted yellow and green. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you got to be kidding me. Get out of my house. So then <laughs> the Packers are blowing us out. He's up in my face taunting me. Not even and- a Packer. Fan. Not even a Packers fan. This kid's they, I, it's probably, Just, I think it's a Giants fan. Okay. And then when the Steelers wow. make it close, he he gets the paint off of his face. I'm like, all right, like pulling it out, he taunts me again. Reapplies the paint. And then uh <laughs> rumor has it. Some people are saying that I went into my bathtub to cry after the game ended, but <laughs> That can't be confirmed or denied. Oh. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. 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 How old were you? Uh, 12, yeah, 13. Oh. 12, 13. <laughs> A tender age. I think I was like seventh yes. grade. The perfect yeah, age to be crying in the bathtub. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who among us in seventh grade did not cry in the bathtub at least once? I mean, you know, it just comes with the territory. Oh, yeah. So she after a Super Bowl loss still. Yeah. Oof. I, Would off, it, I wouldn't know. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't know. I took off school the next day. <laughs> I wasn't showing my face. I wasn't showing my face at all. Aw. 
I was Although overjoyed. Redskins, yeah, the reason I was before overjoyed we beat the Jets and... in the AFC Championship, and I was happy to show my face in school the the next day. <laughs> <laughs> I think Don Fro- did Don freeze for you guys there. I think she's uh, yeah, I think she's frozen. Oh no, unless she's really good at being still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. So really well. Yeah, go go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Um, it, it is interesting to hear like the the Viking side of the Vikings Packers rivalry, of course, because like you know we don't have that perspective. I never hear that. So, um, that's one thing that I that I love about just your your vibe, Paul. Is like you know you understand that there is that element of like being a sad clown on that side of the rivalry. Um, that uh you know uh, that's why that's why i watch it you know it's for like that kind of like self-deprecating humor and and the, the, your guys sports takes are so good it's such a good show oh, uh, it's you. uh you know really cool to meet you guys here no oh, we, we really entirely. appreciate uh really appreciate you guys bringing us on and, and yeah no at the end of the day like at the end of the day we're just having fun we're just, just talking football and, and mm-hmm. it's, you can't take it too serious here or, or else i think you lose you lose some of the show well, that's so true. I mean, like, you can't take it too seriously. It's just football, you know? Mm-hmm. We're just people, and it's just for fun. And because, I mean, I, I definitely know people who take it so seriously that it'll ruin their week, and it's just like, what are you doing? Like, well, I mean, I, you know, there there were oh, the, there are still times where I, I will get upset, but yeah, the, the I think the fifth, sixth, seventh grade years were mostly... Yeah, middle school years, like, it would ruin my week. Now it's now so maybe, got... maybe Sunday night's a little disappointing. The first five minutes is disappointing. Then I'm over it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like you get bummed out after the game. Sure, definitely. And, and you kind of, like, process through it and then, like, go on about the rest of your day. I mean, I've definitely had, like, moments watching a game up here, you know, my computer where uh, it's over, the Packers lose. Like, I, I think really specifically of the one against the Giants in London, that was, like, just such an awful game. And Aaron Rodgers ends with, like, a broken thumb. And I was just sitting there going, like, what the hell was that? <laughs> I think I sat here for a half hour. And then I was like, all right, you know what? It's still early in the day. Go play with my kids. Go have a nice Sunday. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, yeah. when you put it, it's when you start to put it in perspective, it's very different. But I will say there is a, there's that like hour after the game or so where you're just like, what, what mm-hmm. the hell did I just watch? Like, yeah, for sure. I'd say it's probably a solid hour for me too. Look, Northern Illinois, I, I said it three times. Clearly it's still bothering me. Well, that, that's even worse. <laughs> when Northern Illinois that's, beats Notre Dame, that's, yeah, that's like, that's something that I, it takes me a while to get over that. That's inexcusable. That seriously can't happen. <laughs> well, I think an hour to like process after game. That's yeah, totally fair. Absolutely. I think even, you know, the full next game, another three hours. I think that's totally, that's within bounds for sure. Oh, I completely agree. <laughs> Some, uh, you know, what helps though? Some beer and then taking a sick day on Monday. There you go. That tends, that tends to help me get over it. Yeah, we got. I don't know if you guys ever have. We have. We have some spotted cows right now. We, uh, Ooh, do yeah. you? Oh, nice. We have spotted cow. How we got them know. is a secret, but we have, we got spotted cows. I was Love laughing. It. I was like, I, all of a sudden, I realized we just have beer bottles out on the, the broadcast. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're degenerates. Spotted cow is fantastic. You know, oh, I, yeah. I, my first spotted cow was in. I was in Milwaukee at the sports bar. It was called Sobelman's. I don't know if. Mm-hmm forever or not but down the road from miller park not far and i used my uh my fake id i was 20 <laughs> years old and the first the first beer <laughs> I, that i had with my fake was a spotted cow so it holds oh, a wow. place in my home yeah. well that's funny because like i wasn't like a, a beer person at all like through college unlike a lot of my friends and i was 23 no 24 in my first like job out of college and one of my colleagues had me over and this was in oshkosh wisconsin where we both lived at the time and he's like uh you know we have some some beer here and i feel like beer and i was like i'm not really a beer person he's like you got to try the spotted cow just give this a shot and i was like oh my god this is this is awesome and i have some in my fridge right now here in ohio so yeah no totally yeah very good. I finally I- tried a spotted cow. I want to say the last time I was in Wisconsin last year. And I, I wasn't a fan. No. Mm, Isn't that weird? Yeah. Incomprehensible like, to me. <laughs> I, I, I like the um, yeah. Lining Kugel Summer Shandy, that lemony. But normally. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's Jack. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right up my alley. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I like a lot of like super dark beers and this and that. But I'm I like, a, and I didn't drink beer either until I was about 50 years old. Is that legal in Wisconsin? No, that's why she left the <laughs> state. She was she was exiled. It was I, yeah. I didn't like football. I didn't drink beer. I hated no, bratwurst. Like I, I didn't. <laughs> I did like cheese, but 
I got off of that for a while, but yeah, I was out here. I was like 50 ish and I went to Europe and I tried all these crazy beers in, in like ancient monasteries and stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, the monks would make the beers and that's like, okay, I can, I like this stuff. I like this stuff. Anyway. No, I didn't get cat, my cat nipped. I didn't get kidnapped. I my cat, sure. my cat you, didn't get me. There's a standing joke on this show that my cat is going to murder me one of these days. <laughs> Don if says I, it's a joke. I don't know. What? The Don says it's a joke. I don't know. Oh, they don't believe, they think it's for real. It's going to happen. I, I did. She did hospitalize me once, but only cool. once. Ah, I'm <laughs> saying. I, I tried to, I tried to give her a bath. Um, okay. So. We've we've kind of got a little long, and I've enjoyed every second of it. Did, did anyone want to share some superlatives this week, or are we running out of time? What do you guys think, Matt? I could share, I could share a superlative if you want. Yeah, go for it. Um, I got a couple, and and correct me if I'm wrong, but this could just be any super, superlative from week any one. Any old thing. Any yeah, old thing. Anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought a good one. <laughs> well, actually, if I had two, one of them would be you know best debut. And I have to throw out, you know, Sam Darnold was just tremendous in uh, in, in his debut with the Vikings, I, and and sure. maybe most shocking debut could actually be <laughs> because I did not expect Surprising. Sam to, uh, thirteen for thirteen or whatever what he started. Um, mm-hmm. That was just here in Jersey again. We know a lot of Giants fans. They were just talking about Sam getting mauled the entire week. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I was trying to defend them, even though I'm kind of a pessimistic Vikings fan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then to, to come out and play the way he did, I was very impressed. Um, but really, the actual superlative that I would have would be for the uh, the I, I'm not dead yet superlative, and I would give that to Cooper Cup because mm. I played against him in fantasy and he he kicked my ass. I'm sorry to, to curse <laughs> on the show. Uh, 14 catches, 21 reception or 21 targets, mm-hmm. 110 yards with Puka Nakua going down. I mean, he was just. He was just the entire Rams offense. And I thought that that was such a cool performance from him, um, even though in the losing effort to, to kind of show that he's not uh, not dead yet in that yeah. Rams offense. <laughs> nice. Those are awesome. great ones. Um, Matt, Jack, did you bring any superlatives? Yeah, I got one. Uh, I was I was thinking along the lines of a, uh, a home wrecker superlative, and I was going <laughs> to go with TJ Watt. <laughs> you know, everyone is – Everyone's so hyped up about Kirk Cousins coming mm-hmm. to Atlanta. Everyone's picking him to win the NFC South. And some people are saying maybe even Super Bowl. Like he's the last missing piece mm-hmm. that Atlanta needed. You got the weapons. You got Drake London. You got Kyle Pitts. You got Bijan. Now you got Kirk. Let's see what uh what the deal is here in Atlanta. And now, you know, week one's in the books. And some Falcons fans are calling for Michael Penix. <laughs> so, TJ Watt. That dude was quite a home wreck. He was in the backfield all day long and changing these Falcons fans' opinions after three hours. Uh, fickle fans, fickle, so fickle. Um, what do you have, Maddie? Yeah, Anything? I have two this week. So, right. um, first is just you know, of course, now that we're in full on football season, the podcasts are coming at a at a rapid clip. It's like it's like drinking from the fire hose again. Mm-hmm. And so like how many post game breakdowns can you listen to, you know, without getting fatigued? Because there are so many. But the one that really stood out to me this week was the one where uh, Justice Mosqueda joined Andy Herman to talk through it. And you know, they're both like two of the best football minds in the Packers sphere. And so just hearing them talking together for the first time in a while breaking the stuff down, the insights they brought to it. Um, even for like the the Packers fans I hear who haven't listened to that one yet or heard a lot of breakdowns, mm-hmm. uh, definitely worth going back for it just because like they're, they're just so spot on with the stuff that they were saying. And I feel like a lot of the takes they had, like I hadn't heard yet. And like the 15 other, you know, game recaps I'd listened to by that point. So yeah. definitely worth it for best, uh, best breakdown of the game. And my second one, so uh, guys, we don't get super political in here most of the time. And so this is like kind of stepping a toe into that a bit here. Great. But my uh, my favorite tweet of the week, and a week that was peak Twitter, man, you know, especially after yesterday in the presidential debate, oh. just peak Twitter. So my favorite tweet, um, this is part political, part sports. So a um, picture, if you will, right, a picture of Aaron Rodgers scowling at the camera, you know, in uh, in in frustration after somebody did something that he didn't like him. That's probably his fault. Uh, <laughs> next to a picture of the of the people who, of course, you know, the presidential candidates, let's say. Right. And so the tweet, you can read it. Monday night primetime, a wash conspiracy theorist from New York gets cooked in primetime by a superior opponent from San Francisco. 
Tuesday night prime time. A wash conspiracy theorist from New York gets cooked in prime time by a superior <laughs> point from San Francisco. Poetry. <laughs> so good. That's pretty That's funny. funny. That's pretty good. That's why it's creative. All I saw on that was, and I really hadn't been on social media much, did my morning check in with my family mm -hmm. and saw on Facebook that people were posting marked safe from my pet getting eaten by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're eating dogs. They're eating cats. I heard about that in Ohio. Saying, here what? in Springfield, Ohio. Yeah, I don't Not know what you guys are doing. You gotta, you gotta lock it in. <laughs> <laughs> My cat's an indoor cat, thankfully. <laughs> okay, I'll give a superlative. I, I'm so out of it this week. I will tell you, I am going to watch that and listen to that recap, though. That sounds like a good plan. Good good um, I, I, pro I don't know if I shared this or not, but. There was this abandoned cat and she showed up last year after we had that fake hurricane because you know we don't get hurricanes and she showed up again she belongs to somebody but obviously she's not being taken care of but she's a really great cat and so she's been living in our hallway because <laughs> everybody hey, has cats yeah, yeah. okay she has been successfully transported to a cat sanctuary she has her own chalet um, she's doing great in Encinitas, living up the beach life. I'm just so happy she's off the streets. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Ka Dawn doesn't have to. Oh, oh, oh oops. Nope. Dawn doesn't have to worry about anyone eating her cat. She has to worry about her eating her. <laughs> yep. No, she Gosh, coming for you. That's no, right. That's right, my cat will not eat me. She loves me. I mean, both things can be true, Dawn. <laughs> I have two cats as well. Do you? Yeah. Their names it, are Mickey and Minnie. Aww, oh, look at that. That's cute. It's so oh, cute. I'm, uh, still alive. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Disney fan, so. Obviously, that came yeah. From. Well, my first cat was Pepe LaFleur. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, my first cat. I, I, I had Scottish deer hounds, so I couldn't have cats because they would eat the cats. They're a big, giant breed and all that. But I haven't had any for a while and i kind of fell into that whole covid thing where you go out and adopt a cat because <laughs> i was like i'm not going to be a cat i'm not going to be a woman over 60 single with a cat i'm sorry i can't do that well i am now so but so my first kitten her her name is tosh which is french it's a fancy word for spot and i was like i was going to call her spot but she's too like fancy for that so so i have tosh and, and pepe lafleur who was then adopted by a Packer fan I met on Twitter, <laughs> who I adopted as my granddaughter, and she's now in LA, or he's now in LA, so she has Pepe. But yeah, I love that Mickey and Minnie. That's adorable. Yeah, it's actually my uh, my sister's idea, so I won't take credit for it as much <laughs> as I would like to. But uh, no, it was just pretty creative by her. She was only she was young at the time too, so I thought it was pretty uh, pretty That's thoughtful. Okay. How old are your cats? Are they siblings? Yeah, so they're actually, they've lasted longer in our house than we thought they would. We have a pretty <laughs> bad history of, you know, cats mm -hmm. running away or dying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It happens. I give it two and a half weeks. It was yeah. my over under. <laughs> and they were going on like year 10, so I, I got crushed. Yeah, so they're, they're brother wow. and sister. I got, we got them when I was, I believe, a sophomore in high school. Okay. I've been like 16. So we've had them now for like 10 years. That's nice. great. Yeah, so uh, still going strong. That's great. When I when I first adopted Tosh, she was a kitten, Tosh, and the vet, you know, I'm in California. You got to know where I live to understand this fully, but she was like really into like the homemade food and the, the diet and, you know, holistic healing and all that stuff. And she's like, you know, she can live 30 years if you feed her homemade food, feed her properly. But cats do. They live 20, 30 years generally. Our, our, I had a 20-year-old cat growing up. So I'm hoping wow. for that for, for Mickey wow. and Minnie. That's 20, so 30 years. My Fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're, but they're pretty healthy. Like Smokey was super healthy until the very, very end, which is what you want. You don't want like a cat on crutches and walker <laughs> yeah. funny image funny image yeah, all right well guys thank you so much it was really great to get to know you a little bit better and i hope our audience 
checks you out if they don't already uh, follow you. And more, more than anything, I hope everybody is able to have super positive experiences with rival teams and just mm -hmm. enjoy the NFL as a whole. I, I like to watch as many games as possible every week. Um, so, and also cool, we're doing this on Wednesday. We can watch the whole game. We usually go on halftime on um, Thursday night football, but we won't miss any of it now. So That's right. I can just like get into my pajamas and. <laughs> the way to do it. That's, That's a good feeling. Game. That's a good feeling. Yeah. Thank you I'm guys for having us on. We appreciate yeah, it. Donna, appreciate Matt. it. Thanks a lot. It's so yeah. nice to meet you. Matt, so any we're... final words? Oh, I was going to say, where can, we, where can we find you guys? Uh, where can people find you on Twitter, on Facebook, on um, YouTube? Like where, where can people find your stuff? So, I mean, as, as we talked about earlier, you can find us on, on Twitter, uh, the Paul Farrington Show or Paul Farrington Show. That's It's one of those two handles for Twitter, mm -hmm. TikTok, Instagram, uh, all the regular social media spots Perfect. there. Um, and then you could see, I guess, my handle. It's kind of a, all over the place, but my <laughs> handle, yeah, Paul Farrington. <laughs> um, and, but the main place that you could check us out is the Paul Farrington Show on YouTube. We, uh, we have full episodes coming out Sundays, Tuesdays, Thursdays. Um, every now and then we throw in mailbags as well. We have instant reactions to games. Uh, our friend Ziggy, who, who is, unfortunately isn't here tonight, but Ziggy um, will go on live after, not live, but we'll go up uh, after Sunday night football games uh, as well. So you can see all of our content over on YouTube, and that's, uh, that's the best place to check us out, and we're hoping to keep growing. Highly recommend, highly recommend, yes. and hopefully Ziggy can join us here some night too. That'd be great. He's a character. He is yeah, a character. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. He's one of a kind. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maddie, let's bring her home. Yeah. Well, friends, we'd love to have a chance to interview you and shout you out if you're a subscriber and a football fan. If you'd like to nominate someone to be a guest in our podcast, please let us know. Our DMs are open on all the social platforms. And folks, when you subscribe to our podcast, you help us to keep spreading the love in our community. And the best way to help this podcast grow is by sharing it with your friends and family. Yes, Maddie, that's right, because we love you. We're so glad to know you, to be fans of you, and have the luxury of being fans of the most storied team in the NFL. Mm -hmm. We appreciate your support, your subscriptions, and sharing our pod, and we look forward to seeing you next week on... Hey, we like your pod. <laughs> Football in general comes down to discipline and people owning their roles. And when you aren't disciplined or you go outside the scheme, bad stuff happens.